أحب أدعو ستيف ساسبي مؤسس الجمعية Of course, 
have been supporting us from the beginning and made this organization strong. To Huda's family, who's here tonight, all the wife of Ramallah, uh, I want to thank you for making me a member of your family. From the moment that Huda and I fell in love in Jerusalem, they never stood between us, they never denied her me, and they always welcomed me into their family. I say thank you for helping me and my girls live here, especially Nasser and Shadda who live next to me and take care of my daughters. I wouldn't be able to make it without your guys' love and support. To all of our donors and chapters from abroad who built this department, um, with Sam al Jayusi, George and Karen Longstreet, Reem Shah, Fahid Johnny, the list is on, it's on the wall in the department. These are the true the people who really made it possible. This department was 100% privately funded. And for that, we're extremely proud. And those people need to be acknowledged and supported. And I want to give a special thanks to Iman Oda, uh, who made this guy. <laughs> So active, she's head of our Javad chapter, she's head of our human resources, she made this gala dinner work, and she's also put up with me, which is not as easy, an easy thing to do at all. Uh, to my beautiful daughters, Dima and Jenna, uh, I want to say that I cannot express in any language how much I love you. Where's Jenna? Over there. Under the table still. I, uh, the happiest day of my life was the day that Dima was born, uh, because she was truly a love child between Buddha and myself. And Dima, now you're old enough to understand how proud I am of you. And uh, as a young lady, you're becoming. And, uh, and I want to thank you for stepping up and taking care of Dima all the time, for Jenna all the time. I'm in Gaza, I'm in Beirut, I'm outside. Dima, she's only 16, but she's really a young lady. And I love you so much, sweetheart. Um, finally, before I start, I'm not going to make it too long, but I do want to ask my staff of the PCR to stand up. Yes, so by you can stand up. These, Noor, Abdi, Reach, this is the organization that I represent. These four ladies and guys, Farah, which you love me, Farah. Hi, Farah. These are the, the ones who make this organization. I'm on the stage today representing them. I'm speaking as a group. We are an organization dedicated to serving Palestine. From Rafa to Janine, from Hebron to Beirut, from Chile to Ohio, our organization are, is made up of these hardworking people, and none of this accomplishments is on the shoulders of one person. It's on the shoulders of these guys. Thank you, ladies. As I mentioned, this department wasn't built by USA wasn't built by the European Union. We didn't have a Saudi Sheikh fly in and give us money. This department was built by hundreds and thousands of people all over the world who rode motorcycles from Dubai to Singapore, ran marathons, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, fundraised through our chapters in San Diego, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Atlanta, Chicago, Cleveland, Los Angeles. This department was built through the sweat and hard work of common people. And this is what I'm so most proud about. Because it shows, more than anything, what can be done when we unify, and when we work together in a positive way to accomplish something here on the ground in Palestine. And we don't depend on the United Nations, and we don't depend on Mr. Obama and his words to make change here. We make change. We, as individuals. I met my wife in 1991, as you saw, in Jerusalem. We fell in love, we got married, as men and women do every day, all over the world, since the time began. The only difference was that she's Palestinian and I'm an American. That's not that common here. In fact, I think I was the first American guy to marry a Palestinian in Ramallah. I challenge anyone to find anyone. Another example of that, Comrade Mikeli followed me with his beautiful wife, Sahara, from Haifa. But it was after me, not before. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and, I, and, you know, we started to build a life together, uh, Huda and I, as you saw. And our life was PCRF, and our love was Palestine. She was perfect for me, and I tried to be perfect for her. Huda taught me how to be a father. She taught me how to be a husband. She taught me how to be a man. She gave me, most importantly, two beautiful girls who give meaning to my life. Without Huda, there would be no PCRF. Without Huda, literally thousands of kids today in Palestine <laughs> would not be alive. 
and it's in that spirit that we honor this great woman. When she was diagnosed with cancer on Christmas Day, we were shocked. Of course, we never imagined something, nobody ever imagines something like that could happen. And we were determined to fight it. Only two years earlier, we had just had Jenna after 10 years of trying to have another child. And our dream was to grow old together and to raise her and to see Dima and Jenna become young ladies, to start their own families, normal dreams. And if you ask for more than that out of life, you should. And if you want more out of life than friends and family, you should. Friends, family, and freedom are really the key to happiness. This is a very common <coughs> statement, but it's so true. I know it from experience. During the first few months of Huda's illness, her chemotherapy, Israeli forces started bombing Gaza. We remember this. Late December 19, uh, 2008, January of 2009. And in her hospital bed, as chemotherapy started to go through her system and her hair fell out, she lost weight, sores came into her mouth, she couldn't eat, she was sick, she was afraid because she was now diagnosed with this terrible disease. She just had children, she has two beautiful young daughters. She worked day and night, still in the PCR. She would sit in her hospital bed with her computer, still working to arrange treatment for these children. Even after she died, we had sent 30 injured kids from Gaza after that war for treatment outside. And that's the spirit in which we honor her today. This disease strikes fams and family and friends, as you know very well. We feel desperate, frustrated, helpless. The only thing I could do for my wife every night before she went to bed was to tell her I loved her. Every night before she slept, I whispered in her ear that she wasn't alone. And that's the message I want to say to you as Palestinians tonight. Just as my wife wasn't alone fighting her cancer, you're not alone fighting your cancer called occupation. That you have friends. <laughs> and you have people willing to come and support you. This department isn't just for kids with cancer here in the West Bank and Gaza. It's a symbol of what can be done to help heal and support Palesti the Palestinian struggle. It's for our brothers and sisters in the Mukhayamat in Syria and in Lebanon. It's for our hunger strikers suffering in Israeli prisons without trial, tortured, without any hope. It's for our farmers, farming land being encroached by settlements and walls. It's for the mothers of children who have to send their kids to school through checkpoints. This department isn't just to serve Palestinian kids with cancer. It's to remind Palestinians, you're not alone. We stand by you. We are going to support you. We're going to fight this cancer called occupation in a positive way. Not through hatred, not through violence, but through love and courage. When Huda died, a part of me died. Part of Dima died. Part of Jonah died. She was the light in our hearts, the center of our family, and the woman who gave us love and joy. <coughs> not a moment of the day passes when I don't think about her and I don't miss her. And I wish she was here to see how we're surviving as a family, to see how the PCR is growing with our great staff, and to see this great department, which is being built in her name and her honor. I want her to know that we built this as a loving husband honoring his wife, as an organization respecting a leader, and as a nation respecting a great daughter, sister, and mother. Military occupation is like cancer. These settlements, checkpoints, walls, prisons, this is like leukemia that wrecked my wife's body. I believe the only way we can fight this cancer is to stay unified, to stay strong, to work together, to not be afraid, to not give in. My wife never gave up fighting. And this is a lesson for you as Palestinians. It's the same thing on a national level. You have a cancer here. We don't fight with violence. We don't fight with hatred. Hatred is cancer. Love, unity, respect with each other. This is the only message I have for you tonight as Palestinians. If we have to fight this cancer with love, with courage, with determination, not to give up hope, never give up hope. 
This is the only way you will have freedom in your country and in your homeland. Until the moment my, my, the spirit left my wife's sick body, she never gave up hope. She never stopped struggling and she never showed fear. Find love in your hearts for each other. Unify each other. Politics should not separate us. Unity among the Palestinians is the key to fighting this cancer. We have to work together. We have to do things like build departments for cancer, heal our children. Don't forget our brothers in prisons. Don't forget our refugees abroad. Don't forget our responsibility as human beings to remember that we have a responsibility to support Palestine, the people, the children in a positive way. This cancer department is an example of what can be done. There's so much more to do. We want you guys to remember that this accomplishment is only one step in a long road to freeing this country from its cancer. We want to be a part of it. We appreciate everybody who made it possible. We're going to keep working until Palestine is free. And the strength of my wife, the love of my wife, is this where we get our courage and our determination to go forward. Thank you guys for making this possible.